trading stocks is extremely difficult, but when it comes to day trading stocks, it's virtually impossible when you look at the numbers. When I talk to other traders and I'm breaking down how I trade to them, I always start with one thing, and that's market structure and understanding weak names versus strong names, meaning the day trading aspect of that. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to calculate that and how to identify these setups every single day. Let's get to work. Okay, so for a bulk of this video, it's all gonna be on trading view. You can use whatever you want as far as doing your charting software. Again, just go to Google trading view. That's what this is. So again, I'm going to go through every single indicator also. So the number one thing that you're going to use, so we're going to identify one on higher time frames and then on smaller time frames. Okay. So we always start at a higher time frame. for, so for the sake of this video, we'll do something like, um, specifically a stock. We'll go over Tesla. Okay. Now, when we look at Tesla, a lot of people online were saying to go long and we're going to understand and kind of break down why you should and why you shouldn't. So for indicators, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go in, you're going to get the SMA. If you're on trading view, if you're on another broker, something like that, it'll just be a regular moving average or just moving average. Okay. So understand that it's not smooth. It's simple moving average or moving average. Click that. We're going to have to hit that twice. And then we're also going to go into the VWAP. Again, we have videos over all these indicators as well. And you can also use the EMA. I'll break down every single one of these. So let's start number one with the EMA. So this is for a smaller time frame. I always make this to my chart and I usually use this only on the five minute. Okay. And if you see any of my videos, it's always the red line. Understand that it is always, always, always the red line. I go to VWAP. I get rid of the bands because I hate having any type of bands on the chart. Bands, in fact, do not make her dance. So we're going to get rid of that. And this is always the blue line for me. That's all I change there. Then I go to the SMA. Again, this is where things get interesting. These are for higher time frames. Now, for this, it's always yellow for me. You can tinker this how you will. Now, I go to the 200 at all times. Okay, so 200, and you're going to go to your chart, and you're going to put this at the one day. So it's always based on the one day, no matter where you change your time frame to. That's number one. Then you go to your second one, and this is another one, the 200 MA. As Again, you're going to put this down to your weekly. That is what you're going to have there. Okay. These always remain the same. Those stay there no matter what. You can change the second orange if you want, just so there's a little bit of variation. And that's what we see. So, what we're going to start with first is the higher time frame. Okay. So, when we look at the higher time frame, what's a few things that we know? Now, the line you need to come in contact with the most is the 200 daily, the yellow line. So, when we look here, Tesla, for the most part, going back to 2020, remained above the 200 daily moving average and above the weekly, but it only really tests the daily for a long period of time. Correct. So for like two, three years, you just went straight up. It was awesome. It was cool. Your trend was clearly bullish. So what does this mean? I would say a majority of all my trades favored the upside based on this. Now you fast forward to around mid 2022 to now, and you've spent a lot of time under the 200 SMA. So what does that mean? A bulk of my trades should be to the downside because you're operating below that 200 SMA, meaning the trend is weak. Okay. And then when you get back above it again, yes, like you thought the trend has flipped back to bullish again, back and forth, back and forth. And remember, this is a daily chart. So this is not going to change frequently. Okay. You're going to spend months in one trend and that's where you're going to favor most of your trades. Okay. Now, when you get below the weekly, that means you're extremely weak. Not only are you weak below the daily, but when you get below the weekly, you are very, very, very weak. Okay. Now I want to show the contrary to this. We're going to show another stock. So we're going to go to something like NVIDIA. Now, when we look at NVIDIA, let's just get rid of these lines here. So it's really clean. Now, NVIDIA, even though Tesla is operating below the 200 SMA, NVIDIA is operating above it. And you can see that it's just been grinding and grinding and grinding for about a year and a half now, straight to the upside. Now, all my trades here, I don't want to focus on the upside of this trade. Why? Because this is clearly operating in a bullish trend, making higher highs and higher lows. It's very easy and simple to see. And again, sometimes we get overcomplicated and we make these things way too, you know, hard on ourselves. This is the reality of how we have to look at the market, understand which names are inherently strong and which names are inherently weak. So then when we understand going into something like spy to where the market is clearly pushing up and very bullish that we know what we should be trading to the upside. Should we be trading that weak name like Tesla to the upside or should we be trading Nvidia because it has a higher probability of making a new higher high based on what we just saw on the chart. And 
And that's where this whole thing bases out. Now, that's a really simple way to look at it. And honestly, I think sometimes it's easier said than done, or sometimes it's easier to say something rather than apply it to my actual trading. But again, if you start to recognize this, I guarantee it, it's going to have an immediate impact on your trading and you're going to have better opportunities when it goes to actual breakouts. Because right now in the market, you're seeing people freak out. They're like, we're going to all time highs, but my favorite stock is dropping and they don't really have an understanding. If you don't understand fundamentals, this is a really easy way to have a grasp of that because you're kind of letting all the big money do the work for you. So you're able to look at stocks and say, oh, big money is moving this thing below the 200 SMA, which again, it's important to know hedge funds do use the 200 moving average. That's why when you turn on CNBC, guess what indicator is always on there? The 200 for like 90% of the major equity charts. It's a very big tool to use and it's just giving you a good average of how the movement's going. Hedge funds, traders, big money, don't want to go bullish on names that are operating sideways, that are just losing money, that are really risky, that they're unsure about the possibilities. They want to ride the momentum as long as possible. That's a very big tool and tip that you need to understand if you're going to succeed when it comes to day trading. So stop trying to go cowboy and do it all by yourself and start jumping on the trend. Who do you think is going to be more successful, the billionaire hedge fund manager or you? who just got into trading a week or two ago, or maybe you've been trading for seven years. I don't know. But in the reality, I think, and I believe I have a better success chance at winning if I follow the big money day in and day out. But now you, you're all wondering, you're like, Tyler, 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 what about, what about short term? What about short term? How do I know about this? We'll use Tesla as an example. Okay. So we're going to break down to like a 15 minute and a five minute chart. This is where I do most of my day trading. So what you're going to really see here every single day is your VWAP, the blue line, and the 90MA, which is the red line. Now, the 90MA, I love it personally on the five minute. I'm going to explain exactly why. But first of all, let's go over VWAP. So let's just hide the 90MA for now. Now, VWAP, this is the past two days here on Tesla. Now, Tesla's obviously been dropping. And VWAP, the easiest way to explain this or break it down to you, right? This is where a bulk of all volume comes into a stock or or equity or whatever you're trading. You'll find out, typically you come back into it, you get rejected off of it. That's usually buyers, weak buyers, pushing you back into it with minimal volume and then real money coming back in near the VWAP and making that decision back down. Again, you'll see this happen time and time and time and time and time and time again, as you can see on the chart, you'll notice it over and over. Now, where the 90 may comes into effect, if, so you understand now, if you're underneath the VWAP, you're obviously what? You're bearish, you're not looking good. Very simple to understand. Now, we go to about the five minute here on the 90 MA. And again, sometimes this gets overcomplicated, and I have a video on this as well, so I recommend going and checking it out. But this was a great example. So Tesla has earnings right here, and you just drop off the face of the earth, you open up near 190. But then what happens? You just start to grind below that five minute 90 MA all day long. And you don't reclaim it until basically the next trading day. So for a full day, you're just grinding down lower. And what this tells me is that this is still a great opportunity to go short. Because if you're grinding below the 90 MA, it's showing you the short term trend, right? You flag, you reject, you flag, you reject, and then you just basically reject to the bottom of the you know, the earth, you know, same thing here. We look at the day prior, you know, going into earnings, you're grinding below the 90 MA essentially all day from about an hour into market open. You flag, you reject, you flag, you reject, you flag, you reject over and over and over. A good rule of thumb for me, if I start to discount the 90 MA is when you start to reclaim that for at least two to three candles, like right here, I probably would have traded this over and over on Tesla. And I think I actually had swings on this in discord, right? Just over and over. But then right here, I would have probably been invalidated and just took the day, you know, for myself right there. I would have said you're trying to reclaim this if you've seen my previous video, but obviously it was a trap and you push back down and then earnings get demolished. But on the other side of this, we go to Nvidia and again, you're seeing two different stories on two different stocks. While Tesla's crashing, showing weakness, and mind you, the market's pushing up very strong, NVIDIA is grinding the 90 and made to the highs, and it's literally going parabolic. You start to kind of lose it here, then you reclaim it, and you push from basically 617 into highs of 628. And you're going to see this repeat and repeat. And again, when you get the pullback, guess what happens? You start chopping around it, then you lose it, you lose it, you lose it over and over. And you're going to see this trend play out time and time again. So you're understanding the short term time frame, and then we're also understanding the long term time frame. So for myself, if I'm looking at these names, if I want to go long, then I want to focus on watching a video above the 90MA here. 
But if I'm looking here, I'm not necessarily trying to short NVIDIA here. If I want to show weakness and I'm like, okay, well, I know Tesla is operating weak. So I'm going to go back to Tesla and I'm going to trade the downside here. And that's going to be the focus ping ponging back and forth between what is currently working. Now, again, I understand it's a lot easier said than done. But what I'm going to tell you right now, what I personally do when I talk to new traders and I'm trying to educate, mentor, anything like that, I always say, stop focusing on so many names. Learn three to five and that's it. That's all you should focus on. Get rid of your watch list, focus on five very large names and large caps. And that should be your primary focus. Now, sometimes you won't have one name that's showing weakness and they might all be showing strength. Then that's fine. Then you only trade the upside on those trades. And then you, when you start to get weak, you just take a break, go to the gym, take the day off. You don't have to and you don't need to be trading every single day. That's a very important thing for everyone here to understand. But what I will say, right, when you start to hone in on specific stocks, then you really understand how they move. You understand how the earnings are affected. You understand when you're getting, you know, weird movement, you're getting a lot of volatility, you're getting a lot of stagnation, you're getting a lot of chop, you start to understand all the key factors. And you also start to understand how they react below certain levels, like example, the 200 SMA. When Tesla gets below that level, you start seeing a lot of weakness. But when Apple gets close to the 200 SMA over the past year, you've bounced almost four times and you've refused to lose that key level. How do I know this? It's because I look at Apple almost every single day. I don't spend time looking at penny stocks because penny stocks, ultimately are going to be a lot more volatile and not be really clear with what the market's doing. When I'm a day trader, when I'm sitting down at my charts and I'm trying to make money in the market on large caps, I want to see something that's predictable. I want to see something that's going to move similar like it did before. I want to see something that actually follows and you know represents what the market is doing, the S&P, NASDAQ, things along those lines. I don't want to be playing a guessing game and I don't want to be hopeful that my trade is going to play out. I want to you know, align everything with stats and what has previously worked in the past. Because if it works in the past, then it should continue to work until the system fails, right? That's my strategy. That's how I view it. If you have questions, comment down below. I'll see you next time.